This video will go through the key concepts of unit 3.5, profitability and liquidity ratios. This is, again, one of the more important topics in this unit. You really do need a good knowledge of unit 3.4 final accounts to be able to calculate and understand these ratios. So if you haven't yet, check out the video we have on unit 3.4 to review those concepts first. This topic is all about ratio analysis, and this really helps a firm better understand its profitability and liquidity. Remember that these ratios can help you understand a firm's performance and position over time, but that different firms in different industries will have different benchmarks as to what is considered good. So be careful when you're comparing different firms across different industries. As part of knowing these ratios, for every ratio we go through in this video, you should know how to calculate the ratio, interpret the ratio, and suggest strategies on how to improve each one of these ratios. So let's start with profitability ratios. And these effectively help a firm measure its ability to generate profits and help investors understand what their return on investment will be. So there are three you need to know in this course, and they will all be given to you on your final exam on the formula sheet. The first is the gross profit margin, which refers to uh, a measure that looks at a firm's gross profit expressed as a percentage of its revenue. So here, the gross profit margin, or the GPM, is helping us understand how well a firm controls its direct costs. The formula shown on the screen is gross profit divided by sales revenue times 100. This is expressed in a percentage. Remember, the multiplied by 100 means it is expressed as a percentage. Do not forget the percentage sign on your test or exam. That will result in a lost mark. The next is the profit margin, which refers to a measure that looks at a firm's profit before interest at tax expressed as a percentage of sales revenue. So very similar to GPM. Um, instead of just looking at direct costs, we're now looking at how well does a firm control all of its costs, both direct and indirect. The formula shown on the screen is profit before interest in tax divided by sales revenue times 100. The last ratio is the return on capital employed. Now, this looks at how well a firm can use its capital employed to generate profits. It helps us understand really how efficient a firm is in generating profits. It is calculated by the profit before interest in tax divided by capital employed times 100. You can think of this capital employed as the long-term sources of finance. So capital employed is made up of long-term loans or, lo or non-current liabilities, as well as the equity section of the balance sheet, share capital and retain profit. To improve the firm's profitability ratios, like the name would suggest, the focus is all about improving the firm's profit before interest and in tax. This means that the firm should look at ways to either improve its revenue, such as through changing its price or attempting to increase its quantity sold, or ways to reduce its cost of sales, reducing raw materials by sourcing from a cheaper supplier, or expenses, reducing market expenses or reducing rental expenses by moving to a cheaper location. So the important thing here is to improve any of these profitability ratios, you need to change one of the levers that determines um, profit before interest in tax, be it revenues, cost of sales, or expenses. Any strategy related to these three would be considered appropriate as long as you contextualize it and link it to case information. Now, the second part of this topic has to do with liquidity ratios. Liquidity ratios effectively measure the extent to which a firm can use its current assets, remember what it has and what it is going to use in the, in the short term to pay off its current liabilities, effectively its, its short-term debts. These firms that have poor liquidity ratios might face what's called a liquidity crisis. This is when a firm can't pay back its short-term debts or it can't pay off its short-term current liabilities because it doesn't have enough current assets. There are two liquidity ratios you need to know, uh, and these will be given to you on your final exam on the formula sheet. If you have a test at school um, relating to finance, your teacher should also give you the formula sheet with these ratios. The first one is the current ratio. Now, this is a liquidity ratio which calculates the firm's ability to meet its short-term debts, generally speaking. So this is a simple formula uh, shown on the screen, which is effectively current assets divided by current liabilities. A good benchmark for this ratio is 1.5 to 1. So having it at 1.5 to 1 shows that the firm has enough current assets to pay off its current liabilities, but it also shows that the firm has some buffer just in case their financial situation takes a turn for the worse, then they do have some extra current assets to weather the storm and still continue to pay off their debts. 
At the same time, keep in mind that you don't want the current ratio to be too high. You don't want the current ratio like six to one or seven to one, because if a firm has too many current assets that aren't being used, um, it might suggest that they're not really effectively employing their assets. Uh, instead, these current assets, instead of sitting in a bank, cash earning interest, they could be used for capital expenditure instead. So they could be used to fund business growth and to expand the business. The second ratio is the acid or quick test ratio. And this is very similar to the current ratio, except it removes stock from the equation. So this is because stock can be very difficult to turn into cash, and it therefore might distort the liquidity calculations if we include it like we do in the current ratio. So the formula is very similar to the current ratio, except we subtract stock from current assets. So the formula is current assets minus stock divided by current liabilities. So as an example, think of a bakery, we might see a current ratio of 1.53 and think, okay, this business is in a strong liquidity position. However, we learn that 60% of their uh, current assets are tied up in cakes, muffins, croissants, etc., uh, that are not yet sold. Then we might question whether the business is in fact in a good liquidity position because if, these, um, if this stock is not sold, well, they'd be spoiled. The business would have to throw it away. Right, so it's important for us to get an understanding of how much of the current assets of a business is tied up in, in, in stock, and that's what really the acid quick test ratio is helping us understand. Does the business have enough cash and debtors to cover their current liabilities? A good benchmark here is 1.1, uh, or excuse me, one to one, which shows that the firm has enough liquid current assets to pay off its current liabilities. In terms of knowing how to improve these ratios, firms either need to figure out a way to increase their current assets or decrease their current liabilities. So if we start with current assets, the firm might encourage customers to pay by cash or use its surplus cash to pay off short-term debts. On the current liability side, firms can negotiate with suppliers for an extended credit period. So they might work with their suppliers to figure out a schedule that allows them to pay back their debts later or to fund more of their debts using long-term loans rather than short-term loans. So this would give them the cash now while giving them more flexibility over repayment. For walkthroughs on the different ways these ratios might come up during your exam and the different tricks that your teacher or the IB may throw at you in testing these concepts, check out the quantitative skills videos on our website. The best way to master these concepts is to do practice using case studies to familiarize yourself with how this can get asked in a test or exam. Also remember the importance of being able to interpret what the ratio means and how or why the ratio changes over time. This is particularly important in the new syllabus of business management starting from 2024, as there are, we expect that there'll be more questions of this nature paired alongside calculation questions. Developing this skill might also be useful to you in your IA. Many students look at profitability or liquidity ratios uh, on their chosen company and understanding how to interpret these ratios can be very, very helpful uh, in doing the analysis part of your IA. That concludes the key concepts for this topic. We recommend you use these steps as part of your study routine. Pay particular attention to steps two and three, as this is something overlooked by many BM students. Practicing case studies and developing application skills is the best way for you to improve your grade in BM, as all your school tests and the final exam are case study based. To practice these skills and access more detailed videos on BM content, please check out the resources on our website, diplomaly.org. If you need any support with any part of the BM course, including the IA or EE, feel free to get in touch with us via email or WhatsApp. Best of luck with your studying.